finally, I saw a video that talked about child neglect. Of all the videos you see on YouTube of babies screaming and crying because the parents are not giving them the milk they need. They're just sitting there, some of them, and they're letting them scream and cry, or they're letting the twins suck on each other's nose or ears or something. That is so... I mean, it, it made me outraged, but they had all the comments shut off that you couldn't tell. The only thing you can do is when you get into the video, you don't know uh, what's coming. And then by the time you see it, I mean, it's outrageous that parents are just so neglectful and so, oh, what is the matter with them? You know, sometimes, you know, you see these, well, I'm only going to say I got into this whole thing with God about the babies. Uh, I, I don't know how many years ago it was that the Lord brought me a, a vision that was so atrocious and showed me that this was going on in this nation. This was just before uh, I even found out who Trump was, before he even ran. And it was so horrible that it caused me to fall, fall on my knees and scream at the top of my lungs at the vision that I was seeing. It was that horrible. Because and then the Lord spoke afterwards and said, this is what's going on in this nation. This is what people are doing with babies. This is what parents are doing with their babies. This, this is so awful. You live in a day where if they don't kill them, they're molesting them. If they don't molest them, they're, they're doing other things. It's horrible. It is horrible. The, the confusion of, of them being able to give up all natural affection. This is what you have to do in order to be like this. You have to give up natural affection. And my first radio program that I preached, I talked about how preachers had lusted for big churches, lusted for, uh, for, for, uh, for more parishioners, lusted for more money. And they operated in that. They didn't operate in thinking about God or thinking about the people. They operated constantly on their minds. When Even when they preached on their minds, was to get more money, get more followers, get more people, get more. And that's a lust that came right out of their heart that that's what they wanted. So what they did was is, is uh, like I preached that first message, I said, because of all this lust, the devil comes in the back door and brings in sexual lust. And what they do with it is, is they fight this sexual lust all the time that they can't get rid of it. They can't get rid of it. And the reason why they can't get rid of it is because they're not fighting the real lust. The lust for a big mountain of prayer. The lust for a, a retreat. The lust for... They can't get rid of the sexual lust because they aren't dealing with the lust for more parishioners. The lust for more people. The lust for more money. They're not dealing with that at all. They are dealing... Then when the sexual lust comes, it really takes hold of them where they can't hardly even change from it. And this is what people are doing with babies. This type of thing is, is where the unnatural part of a man and a woman doing the unnatural, men and men and women with men doing the unnatural, but it's the man and the woman I'm talking about because they're the ones that have the babies. They're the ones that God is going to hold so responsible for these babies. And they wind up neglecting the, the baby. They, they wind up doing so much evil with that baby. And they're doing it from the time it's in the stomach, in the womb, clear, clear until afterwards. And it's all due to unnatural affection. They don't have any. They shut it off a long time ago. They decided when a, when a man or a woman decides they don't want no parts of their, their spouse even. That is shutting off natural affection. They don't want to be hugged. They don't want to be touched. They don't want to be anything. That shuts off natural affection and that affects your children. Don't you understand that? You decide. This is why the Word of God says to let your 
wife's bosom to be everything to you. Because if you don't, you're going to lust after something else. If you don't find love in, in no matter in, when your wife ages or changes, if if you married because of what they looked like, you got a problem. You have a real problem. And and that problem is is you never really loved anybody. You only love yourself. You do things for yourself. And there's a way to change that. There's a way to stop that. And his name is Jesus Christ. You get into the word and you fill up with the truth of the word. And that changes you. It You can't remain the same whenever you're really searching for God. You will never remain the same. You cannot. You need to understand what the word of God does when it enters into your heart and your mind. You have a choice to reject it, to take your own thoughts and feelings and do whatever you want and go against it. And a lot of parents have gone against natural feelings. There are people who drive themselves crazy, who go on drugs that are go towards the unnatural. And that stems from the family. That stems from in the in the parents thinking that God didn't really mean what he said. God did not mean that, hey, God said our, our marriage bed is undefiled. It's everything and all. No, that is not what Paul the Apostle meant. He was never married, but he never meant that. I'm sure he didn't because he knew that God did not on one side say, don't do this and then say, well, because you're a Christian, it's okay if you do the unnatural. No, no. You need to repent of it. If you do not want to affect your babies, if you do not do not want them to grow up desiring men with men and women with women, you are going to stand before God for this, these things. Understand this. People need to wake up and understand it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. There are a lot of things that are a lot worse that can happen to you than just feeling sick or being sick or having this problems. You've got to understand how God feels about this. He made you a certain way. He gave you wisdom through your body to know what to do with it. He gave the wisdom to know what end does what. And that's why he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for it. He literally wiped out that city to nothing. And he even went into the city to give people an opportunity and a chance to repent. And what did they do? They wanted to rape the angels. They wanted Lot to let out the angels so that they could rape them. This is how disgusting this gets. The, the, the refusal to listen to the natural law of God in your own body, in your own mind. You know, you... You think that you cut off all natural affection, so therefore it's okay that you live alone in your thinking and in your feeling. No, that is not what God called you for. He said it is not good for a man to be alone. This is what he said, why he created Adam. That's why he created Eve, I mean. He created Eve for Adam because he said it is not good for man to be alone. Because God understood that he wanted people to have a relationship with him. He didn't want to come and force you. He didn't want to come and say, you got to serve me. If you don't serve me and you don't do it this way and you don't do it that way, you're going to hell. He did not prepare hell for you. He prepared it for the disobedient angels. You choose to do that. You, ch Every single thing in life is a choice. Your thinking, your thinking is a choice. You have to decide in your thinking, and that thinking will change your heart, and you change your mind. Your heart will do a change, and it'll change your mind about everything. You come to a place where, okay, Lord, I did this. I wronged my my children. I wronged my wife or my my uh, husband. Okay, Lord, I'm sorry. Lead me to repentance. Lead me to the place that I could find salvation. God knows. God understands that this, these things are so important and you've taken them lightly. So many of you have taken them lightly and your, your leaders, your leaders in politics, your leaders in, 
in the nation, your leaders in the media, your leaders everywhere, and you're sitting there and you are feeding this frenzy of evil. It's a frenzy. It's like sharks see blood and they just go into a frenzy. And that's why you see protests. They go into a frenzy. They do the, 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 I'm not talking about the peaceful protests. I'm talking about the violent ones that have burned down buildings and, and have actually been responsible for killing people. It's a frenzy. It's a feeding frenzy. Wake up and understand your faith, your belief, what you think and what you feel has power to feed this evil. You might think that I'm way off course. I don't care. If God gives me this message and he tells me to tell it, I'm going to tell it. And when I tell it, people need to understand. When Once God speaks it to you, you become responsible. You become responsible for everything you hear. You can no longer shut it off. It will meet you. The truth will set you free. It will meet you in eternity. If you don't change now and ask God and humble yourself like a little child and ask God to forgive you and, and help you and lead you out of it. See, this is where people are lacking. They don't work out their salvation with fear and tremble, trembling. They do not fear God enough to ask God to work it out, to help them. You know, I'm a human being. And I had to go through that process. I had to go before God and say, I did this, this, and this. I am so sorry, Lord. I don't want to change. My flesh don't want to change. But you told me if I don't change that I can burn in hell for it. So, Lord, please forgive me and give me your grace, which is favor from God for believing in Jesus Christ. It's the power to believe if I could put my heart in my head into your heart and your head, I would do it, but I can't do it. You are a free moral agent of choice. There are many of you that that follow a lot of my videos and you're holy. You you don't do that. You don't but there are many out there that do, do this and think it's harmless. They think what you think and believe is harmless and I'm not hurting anybody else but myself. It's the same thing they do with drink. That's the same thing they do with drugs. And it, it affects their whole family that they're going to stand before God for. And then you have the judges that come along are doing some of this evil and they're doing it and saying, well, I'm a Christian and God's going to be, it's okay. God says, I'm allowed. No, God never said anybody was allowed. God says, well, no, the word of God says it's okay. I'm, it's undefiled. You do not understand God. God does in one place say this is unnatural. Don't do it. And in another place say it's unnatural. You can do it. He is not a respecter of person because you call yourself a Christian doesn't make it true. And because you call yourself a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, a prophet, and you do those things, it is not true. And you take on the leadership of a man and you sit over a woman like she's nothing. She's a piece of garbage. She's a piece of garbage to you that only cleans house. She only takes care of the children. And you literally made that Bible a sexist Bible because it was not God that did that. Because he never treated a woman in that Bible like dirt. He never treated a woman in that Bible like they were a slave. He didn't do it to his mother. He didn't do it to the Samaritan woman at the well. He didn't do it to anybody. He never, never looked down on a single woman like they were way less than anybody else. And this went rampant through not only this nation, but the world. And people need to understand you need to repent of these things. You need to understand that that woman is a human being born just like you were. And they and they, they are human before God. And that's why he said in his word, there is no man, there is no woman in Christ Jesus. That's why he does not choose gender to pour out his gift. He doesn't say, well, I'm going to give you this gift because you're a man. No way. He, had, he would have to be a respecter of persons to do that. And he is not a respecter of persons. So you either have to deny that a woman is a person. And, and go on your merry way, or you have to understand who he is. That woman is much as a, as a human being as you are. How 
dare you treat her that way? How dare you act like she can do nothing? How dare you have churches and doctrines that teach this kind of garbage? How dare some of you go, go out and in these doctrines and how dare you say that God, Jesus Christ, got married? He was celibate. That he was holy in his body, mind, and spirit. He had the ability to weep. When he knew he was going to raise Lazarus, he cried for those that were sorrow because he, they, they were dead. He wept with them because he felt sorry for what they were going through, even though he knew he was going to raise Lazarus. When the children come to him, he said, come unto me. He, he said, don't stop them. The disciples were so ignorant on some things. They are as ignorant as you church leaders today. They, they would, didn't want the children to come. Do you know there's some religions that teach that if your child is nine or ten years old or five or six and they love Jesus, you are to be ashamed. I mean, I was told that. I was told that personally by people I know. Oh, you ought to be ashamed that that child knows God. You're insane. That is insane. That is so far out. I mean, these are the same people that tell you, well, God didn't mean that we did, could, shouldn't lie. He did not. Jesus didn't. He did not mean that. He knew there are times in our life we have to lie. That's a, uh, It's mind-boggling to think what has been done in God's church. It is mind-boggling to understand how they have taken the church and destroyed it. And when God brought that vision of what they are doing with children in this United States, how mothers have no affection for their own children, that so much they allow uh, because they have to have a man. They let that man live with them and he murders and rapes their children. What is the matter with you? You have a and the ability to go before God and tell him that you're sorry and repent. Yes, yes, one sin is as bad as all the rest. Don't you see that? You read Romans chapter 2. He said, you not only know <coughs> that they are worthy of death, but you do the same things, and you condemn those who do. You, you tell everybody, they're, you lift up your Bible, and you swing it around, and you say, they're going to die. God says kill them. You're insane. I told you before, insanity comes from giving up everything that you know inside to be right and true. You give it up. You literally decide you are not going to listen to not lying, not cheating, not stealing. You literally decide the Ten Commandments are no good and you kick them aside. You literally decide thou shalt not bear false witness and you start believing these politicians that can lie about everything. It's okay they're a politician. They're allowed to lie. It's okay if if people like Mad Maddow stands in and she's propaganda and a, and a judge says that's propaganda. She's allowed to lie. That's insane. And you follow it. You follow it. That's the thing that's outrageous to God is you follow it. Why? Why would you follow it? Because you are so saturated with the need for entertainment that you'll take anything. Anything as long as it's not the Bible. Anything as long as it's not the truth. And you can get out of that. As bad as that is, God, Jesus Christ died so that you can change. He can heal that mind and heal that, that body and heal every part of your life. That's what he's into. He said, he picks, he does not call very many wise men, very many great men. He calls nothing to make it something. That's what he does. For his glory, he wants to say to everybody, look what I did with so-and-so. Just like he did with Paul. Paul was a murderer. The apostle Paul was a murderer. So what did he do? He put Paul the apostle before the whole world, even to this day, and said, look what I did to a murderer. Look at how I changed his life. I can change your life. I could change everything about you if you will let me. All you have to do is by choice is let me. Let me come in. Come as a little child needing God. Come and understand you're answerable for what you do. Come and understand. He wants you 
like I said, when I first got saved, I was the worst hypocrite there was. And God showed me how to repent. God took me right into the word. And I felt like God was saying to me, thou hypocrite. And I had to repent all the way. I couldn't just repent on one little thing. I had to repent on everything. So then while I'm repent, busy repenting, I become a target to those who are sitting real high in church thinking they're everything. And they're judgmental. Their hearts are rotten. God says they're filled the sepulchers of, of, of the grave. The, they're, they're, like, <clears throat> they're like dead inside. And they, are, oh, but they love Jesus. But they can tell you to your face, I believe a woman has a right to choice to a choice to kill their baby. They can tell you that. They believe that with all their heart, in spite of the word that they go and listen to every single Sunday, every single Wednesday. They have the gall and the nerve to stand there and help people perform those things. These things just didn't happen yesterday. Nothing ever just happened yesterday. This came from years and years and years of festering and festering and festering until it got so bad. It's so blatant now. It's so, oh, they're, you know, the greatest man in the world. They have proven over and over the things that he does with women, with children, with everything. But, oh, oh, he's just so great. And then they crucify the one that doesn't want to kill children. They crucify his character so you will never support him. So that they can always reign as kings in this country and do what they want to do with the babies. And I don't mean infant babies. I mean babies, children. They are using them right now. What do you think they're doing in the schools? In, in having drag queens and, and they're having on, 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 at the auditorium, they are having, they show you the videos of, of the kids that are watching them strip naked, teaching them about sex. It is sick. And some of you can waken up. Some of you can get out of it. If I can reach one of you, I've done my job. Some of you who claim to be the highest are living the worst, and you know it. You know it. And I've heard the preacher sit down and say, I can, this, this young boy worships me. He thinks I'm the best there ever lives, lived. I can either tell him the truth of what I really am, or I can let him go on in what he believes. You should have been living for God clear to the heart but because you didn't you have parishioners that you led out to actually believe that God would covet what another has and give it to them and if they couldn't give it that Jezebel spirit in you went to kill to get it so they burn down what they can't have they destroy it because they feel they can't have it you didn't teach them how to labor hard and work that God will bless them. You didn't teach them how to be forgiving and God will bless that. You didn't teach them how not to hold other people responsible for what happened to their history. You didn't do that. <clears throat> You're still baptizing them. You're still supporting them. Why? Because inside of you is a hatred for, for something other than your race. So you wanted to switch everything over. So at the same time that you're, these people are misusing babies, then you have these people that are fighting over the races. You, what is the matter? Ask yourself a question. Why do you love to listen to it so? Why do you love to watch it so and, and hate somebody that they propagandize you on every day for years? Every day, every day they pound it. Tokyo Rose did that. Every day. You're never going to win. They know what they're doing. These are communist actions. This is what they do. And the boy, they know how to do it because they know that none of you have gone to a place where you're supposed to go. You haven't really gone to God. You only said you did. And that's where the devil can target you. Now, I'm not talking about there are many, many thousands of people that are listening to me right now that would never do that stuff. But you people 
need to be praying, need to understand that God is not out to kill or destroy these people. What he's out to do is to lead them to repentance. And that is why I said when he said, bless those that persecute you, pray for those that despitefully use you. He means pray that if it's at all possible to save their souls, if it's all possible to turn them around, lead them to repentance so that they may get saved so they don't have to burn in hell. For God says he wills that all men be saved. Not one or two, all. All covers all. 